We will now have our nonpartisan candidates for prosecuting attorney district 22. Welcome candidates, Mr. Chris Walton and Parker Jones. Mr. Walton, you may now make your opening statement. Thank you. Hello, my name is Chris Walton and I'm running for prosecuting attorney here in Saline County. I have uh, worked in this county since 2004 where I've prosecuted all kinds of different cases and helped protect uh, your, our community, your family, and you. I uh, have a long proven track record here in Saline County. Uh, I have, uh, and because of that, I've received the endorsement of the uh, Saline County Sheriff's Office. I've also received the uh, endorsement from uh, a, lot, a number of elected officials who have watched me over time. Uh, specifically, uh, State Representative Lanny Fife, County Judge Jeff Airy, the Collector Joy Bauer. And I think that they've all come back and endorsed me because they have watched me over the years work hard, thank you, work hard and uh, be fair to those around us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walton. Mr. Jones, you have your opening statement. You have one minute. Good evening. Thank you guys for being here. My name is Parker Jones, and I also have lived and worked here in Saline County for 15 years. My wife and two children and I have made Saline County our home, and my law practice has actually been here across the street from the courthouse for over a decade. As an attorney in private practice, I spend every day in my office helping people with their legal problems. Oftentimes, I've been serving as a special judge in some of our district court cases that deal with criminal matters. I'm running for prosecuting attorney to bring fresh ideas, to lower our crime, and to protect our families. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Jones. You are the first recipient of this question. So what changes or steps need to be taken to ensure children in the foster care system are returned to a healthy home environment? Should there be tougher consequences for parental neglect or abuse? I would say absolutely. Uh, you know, we need to protect our children. That is one of the, uh, one of the fundamental responsibilities as a parent. Uh, I have two small children myself. It is important that we uh, not just balance the, uh, the state's responsibility, but our own personal responsibility as, uh, as human beings to take care of children. In this case, if you're not doing that uh, and you've abused children, injured them in some way, criminally responsible, then you need to be held responsible for that. All right, thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Walton. What changes or steps need to be taken to ensure children in the foster care system are returned to a healthy home environment? Should there be tougher consequences for parental neglect or abuse? Right now, the prosecutor's office and the state laws allow for a wide latitude in what they can do. I used to be an uh, attorney for the Department of Human Services. And what we would do is we would sue parents to take their children away. Now, that sounds odd, but that's the way the system worked. And we put them into foster care and put the children into foster care, and then they would have to, those parents would have to work toward reunification services to get their children back. And I think that that's an appropriate system. However, they are, it is grossly, grossly uh, underfunded, and there are not enough good caseworkers there working those cases because you're dealing with the most vulnerable section of society. Now, as far as uh, the criminal penalties, we have laws where we can prosecute people, and I think we do that. I'll tell you, I worked a, a rape case where a police officer was raping his children. That guy ended up with over 100 years in the penitentiary. 
He's still there. It happened years ago. I'm proud of the work we did. It was the most one of the most brutal cases I've ever worked because it was the most vulnerable member of society being taken advantage of by a parent that he ought to be able to trust and that society thinks ought to be protecting and serving the public. So we have the laws, and when the cases are terrible, at the prosecutor's office, we went after those people, and I'm proud of the work that we did. Thank you, Mr. Walton. You may re remain standing here at the podium for this next question. Opioids are a major focus in the United States and in Arkansas. Scott Ellington, prosecutor in Craighead County, sued on behalf of all Arkansas cities and counties against the opioid manufacturers. The Attorney General took him to the Arkansas Supreme Court saying that the Office of the Attorney General should do that. Do you side with Scott Ellington that prosecutors should have the authority to sue on behalf of the state, or do you side with the Attorney General that only the, the office has that authority? Why? You know, I've since I've been uh, campaigning, I've not kept up with the news a lot. I've been out here meeting voters, meeting the people of Saline County, talking to them about issues, uh, but not focused a lot on uh, different news stories that have popped up. I, I will tell you that I heard that story and I wondered whether Ellington should do that. I'm a guy that thinks a prosecutor ought to be prosecuting, generally speaking, and the attorney general ought to be working on those particular types of issues. I would have to talk to Scott about it. I would like to hear the uh, attorney general side of it. But generally speaking, I feel like a prosecutor's office has plenty to do without going off and suing and spending time in civil court. I know that we have had big cases in the prosecutor's office. And if you're really working a big case, it can almost shut a prosecutor's office down. So I can only imagine what it would be like trying to do set up civil depositions, go into court, flying different places, when your people in your county are suffering as victims of crimes. I, I, and again, I would want to talk to Mr. Ellington about it, and uh, I would have to weigh out both sides, and I haven't been following the news as closely lately, but those are my general concerns about that. All right, thank you, Mr. Walton. Mr. Jones. Opioids are a major focus in the United States and in Arkansas. Scott Ellington, prosecutor in Craighead County, sued on behalf of all Arkansas cities and counties against the opioid manufacturers. The Attorney General took him to the Arkansas Supreme Court saying that the Office of the Attorney General should do that. Do you side with Scott Ellington that prosecutors should have the authority to sue on behalf of the state, or do you side with the Attorney General that only that office has the authority and why? I think that opiate crisis is a serious problem. Long term, it has damaged our communities, our families. People here in Saline County that I've talked to about this matter are very concerned about it. They're concerned about it because of the, the just the, the depth of the problem and also the breadth of the problem. And I see a prosecutor in this case who is trying to do something that um, may be questionable but it's not my decision to make, it's for the Supreme Court. But what I see is I see a man who's trying to take any step necessary in order to combat what he sees as an opiate crisis, an epidemic in fact. I hear that every day, that we have to do something about it. He seems like he's taking a step to do something about it. It brings attention to the issue, and if someone brings attention to the issue, then we all get behind it and we can find solutions to the problem. And I think that's what, it, what he's doing, is trying to bring attention to the issue. Um, it needs attention brought to it, and I have absolutely uh, no problem with what he's done, and I have absolutely no problem with the prosecutor from a judicial district to, att to attempt to bring that issue to light. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. You may remain at the podium for your closing statement. You have two minutes. Thank you for coming here tonight, and thank you for you, for, for you guys. Um, it's appropriate that we're here in a school, and so as a close, I would just want to go through just a couple of things. Um, one, I want to be very clear that if I'm elected, I will be very tough on crime. I want to send a message to the criminals and the would-be criminals in Saline County that they will receive accountability to their actions. I know 
they talk to each other. They talk in our community. They talk in public. They talk in the jail, in the prisons. And we can send that message to them. We can send a message that crime here will be punished. I have a plan. That plan is to create partnerships with the school, like we have here, outreach for education, and create partnerships with law enforcement so that we can combat the pills, the methamphetamines, the drugs, that, are, that they are damaging our community, and they're destroying lives. My experience in practice, helping people every single day, qualifies me to continue to practice, not just as an attorney, but as the prosecuting attorney. And also, and finally, my commitment to this community. I have worked and lived here for 15 years. My children go to school here, my businesses are here, and I am 100% committed to the success of Saline County. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Walton, you may know, do your closing statement. You have two minutes. Thank you. Why is the prosecuting attorney's office important? Why is it important for you to pay attention to this race? Well, I'll tell you, I've been on the campaign trail and I see the reasons. And it's then the people that I talk to. I was knocking on a door the other day and I ran into an AT&T worker and I had him as a witness in an aggravated robbery case. I was at a, a basketball game the other night and I ran into a husband whose wife had been attacked at Walmart. I was uh, at a uh, function the other night and I ran into middle, former middle school principal Sue Schultz who was there at court every time one of her kids got in trouble. Crime is pervasive, it is everywhere, and it impacts families here in this community. So how do you pick between the two of us? Well, I would say that first, you look at your community leaders. When the judges were making a decision about who to appoint as the chief public defender, they unanimously got behind me for that position. And why did they do it? Because they knew I'd work hard and protect people's constitutional rights. When law enforcement had to make an endorsement, Saline County Sheriff's Office and the Benton Fraternal Order of Police, they endorsed me. And why did they do that? Because they had worked side by side with me prosecuting murder, rape, and major drug cases. That's why they were there. So look at your community leaders, if you don't know me, if you haven't met me yet, and see what they're doing. You have a decision to make, and I will say that when you make that decision, you got to elect a prosecutor that is willing to hit the ground running and that knows what's going on in the office because it could be your family that's a victim of a crime and you want somebody that has the experience to deal with it and is ready to go. And I'm that guy. May 22nd, I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you, candidates.